Hello everyone, thank you very much for watching this video in which I will do some clarifications about the web scopes lesson in the Spring Framework stream. And I have actually two questions here that I will answer on the example that I have uh, used also in the web scopes lesson. And thank you very much also for your feedback that says that uh, you explain well the subjects, but I hope that sometimes for the subject you tell us what are the best practices as well. So uh, that that's uh, very very good. Thank you really really much for the feedback, and I really take into consideration all the feedback that you send me, and uh, I will try to to be more uh, clear with this in the next videos that I will do. I can't promise it would be perfect, so that's why I also uh, keep it. Uh, uh, to uh, if you have questions don't hesitate to ask them because it happens it, it will happen that I will miss things for sure and uh, even don't observe them like in this case and uh, always if you have questions if you think that something is unclear or you want a little bit more about something to I know to, to know about the best practices and I haven't said that always ask me uh, the questions but I will try to be more attentive into that as well now let's focus on the two questions that are I see that you customize the scope of the service could we do the same thing for the controller so for that I have already opened here the same example the way we have left it in um, the um, uh, in the end of the lesson and uh, as you remember I have actually two classes here one is the index controller that I have kept as singleton because singleton is the default so if I didn't use the scope annotation in this case and I have only used the add controller stereotype annotation default this uh, class will be a singleton so I will have an instance uh, in the standard um, uh, in the context of uh, spring and then I have this other class which is the random number service uh, which is actually injected through the means of its interface in uh, the uh, index controller and that's why here uh, when I have uh, changed the scope to a web scope which was the request scope that meant that uh, one instance will actually be created for each of, uh, of the for, for each of the requests for, for this class then I had to specify also a proxy here that could be uh, the target class or the or the interfaces mode depending also on the way we are injecting it so remember that the interfaces can be used only if you use an interface so in this case uh, I'm able to use both of them target class and interfaces uh, but uh, if I would have just injected um, the class directly the concrete type then I couldn't use the interfaces proxy but you can see more about that in the in the lesson now uh, coming back to your uh, uh, question uh, can we change the scope of the controller the answer is yes we can actually change the scope of any bean so you don't is not something that is related to the fact that it is a service or a repository or a controller or something else as long as it is a bean you can change its scope by default it will be singleton if uh, you want to change its scope you can do that for example by using the uh, add scope annotation so just let's just uh, take this exactly as it is and use it above the index controller and you can see now that uh, this uh, this class is also in scope request um, the proxy mode here if you don't inject it anywhere you don't have to specify it you will only need to specify the proxy mode uh, as long as you inject this instance somewhere in order to specify which kind of proxy would you like to use or if you would like to use any kind of proxy at all uh, and now the very interesting thing interesting thing is that uh, I don't even need a proxy here anymore so I can leave it as it is it will work fine but you can actually take it out completely and the reason for why you can take it now out completely is because you are injecting a request scoped bin inside another request scoped bin so in this case both of the bins have the same scope already so you don't need a proxy to be able to access the bin you don't need spring to add its functionality decorating the uh, um, uh, instance in order to be able to access it 
previously and that's that's why I have started my example with having the index as a singleton. This was only for the example purpose in this case. I, I had one bin as a singleton and the other as a request scope so that I can explain why a proxy is needed. In that case you have one instance and then you have the other class that creates multiple instances because it's one per each request. So if you have the controller in singleton scope, then you will only have one instance of the index controller, but you would have multiple instances of the random number service that is um, actually um, being in request scope. You will have one instance per each request because that, that's the request scope. So that's why you need a proxy. You need Spring to decorate um, this uh, injection in order to add some functionality to uh, leave you access the correct instance, create an instance per each request. If you have added it in the request scope as well, the controller, so in this case you will have as well for each uh, request an instance of the type index controller. So in this case you can inject directly um, the uh, reference of uh, the bin without needing a proxy. So that's why in this case you can even leave out completely the property that refers to the proxy and you just change the scope and if I now run my application let's see what happens so practically you you won't see any any change in the execution uh, the application will start and you will just see a different uh, random number each time I load the page so one two three each time I load the page I get a different uh, random number but now not only that the random number service is created for each request but the controller as well will be created for each request and that's why you don't need a proxy and if you uh, just um, uh, uncomment this exception that we were using uh, to prove um, uh, how the um, proxy is, uh, is working you restart the application and then you will see that there is no proxy now because the lines are directly one above it, uh, the, the other. So um, now if I'm calling again and then I go to the console here and I see the stack trace at the beginning of the stack trace, I should be able to see that directly the index controller line 22nd so the index action directly calls the get value method in random number service class line 21. So it's just one above uh, the, the other. So the call, the call is made directly. But if you really like, you can still use the proxies. So if I'm, I'm adding now the proxy mode again, I can use any of them, doesn't matter. You will see that you can still use the proxy in order to access the other bin. So it, it is uh, your choice if you want to uh, use a proxy or not. Usually in this case, now to focus also on the best practices, you wouldn't use a proxy because basically you don't need it. So you, you don't add some functionality if you don't need it in order to, to achieve the best, uh, the best performance. So if I am now refreshing the page and again going back to the stack trace, and you can see already this uh, AOP here. So you can see that in between the get value method line 21 and the index control line 22nd index action, you have a lot of lines, which are actually the proxy that I have added here. So now my, my uh, uh, calls are actually proxied. But again, from the best practice point of view, you always add the needed functionality as long as you need it. So if you don't need a proxy, then you don't add a proxy. You, you don't need to have some lines of code executed just to be there if they don't mean anything, if they are not needed. So in this case, if both of them are of, of scope request, you would probably choose to directly inject the e reference of uh, the bin in, uh, the other, uh, in the other class here without needing a proxy. So you only actually need a proxy if there is no possibility to know exactly which is the instance, like in the case, previous case where I didn't use this at all, then it was um, of uh, type singleton. 
and then if you have a singleton and that's calling a request you need spring to proxy the call in order to uh, direct your call to the correct instance of the uh, type um, uh, of uh, of the type number service because there are multiple instances at this time you will have one instance per each of um, uh, the requests uh, again coming back to the best practices here would you actually use a request scope a session scope or a singleton where this this depends actually on what your application does so what's the business logic of your application if for example if i don't necessarily need to have an instance per each request for some some purpose then i i always keep it in a singleton directly and the reason is well i just want to have as uh, less uh, number of uh, instances as possible in my application i don't need to just increase my memory to have more instances if they are not explicitly needed so if for some reason i would really like to have a separate instance of a specific class uh, per each request then i will just uh, make uh, make it to be in the in the correct scope in the in scope request and i will use it like this but if i don't need to have that for my business logic of the application i would practically prefer to use the singleton scope and that will actually keep my context uh, clean and uh, cleaner and uh, and easier to understand as well so that that's my opinion from the uh, practical point of view of this uh, of these scopes as, as best practices and of course the scope session that's uh, a little bit different because in the scope session you have a session per client so in that case that really represents a, um, a server session which you can't achieve somehow else actually you can achieve by recreating the same thing that that spring is doing behind but you don't don't want to do that so if you really want a, serv a server session so um, just uh, to create to have a specific uh, data stored per an amount of time per client then you will probably use the scope session because that's required for the business logic of your application again uh, coming back to to best practices re related to what i have also told in the pr in in the lecture itself be careful with the server session because the server session also means statefulness and statefulness uh, is um, uh, quite bad for the uh, scalability of your application for the horizontal scalability of your application but for that and for scalability I will actually discuss in another video things like uh, uh, what what scalability is and how can you achieve it in different architectural styles that's something related to the architecture not to the um, uh, scopes of the beans or um, the the purpose of this lecture okay I uh, hope that I have answered that actually your question so the first one uh, was if it's possible to um, uh, if, if it's possible to uh, use the scope request or session for um, the controller and the answer is yes you actually can do that for any bean you can do that just for any of your beans uh, doesn't matter which one so in my case the uh, only reason for why i have uh, only uh, used it in uh, the uh, services because I, I wanted to show you what happens when you have the different types and the proxy but actually uh, you would probably uh, uh, use uh, the controller uh, itself uh, also in request in that case and then uh, about dependency injection if you have another object that is injected in the one that is de defined with scope request it would this be a request scope too the answer is no always a scope the, the default scope is singleton so as long as you don't change it yourself by using the at scope annotation it will remain in singleton and if you want to change it you can change it and make it a request scope as well you can just put your bin in any of the scopes that you would like to to be so by default your uh, data access object will uh, remain in singleton and you will inject it as a singleton and if you would like to to change the scope to be some other scope like you can make it a prototype 
or you can make it one of the web scopes you can do that again by using the scope annotation and depending on where you are injecting it you might want to use also a proxy or not for example if you are injecting it is a request scope and you are injecting it in the request scope as well then you don't need a proxy you just can inject it directly okay uh, again thank you very much for your questions thank you very much for your feedback hope this answers your questions and if not don't hesitate to ask me some more questions again and i will create some other videos for you thank you thank you very much and stay tuned